Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is a makeup tag video started by the beautiful Anne. Regular viewers should recognise her. We've collabed quite a few times. And she started the stash makeup tag. There's only 10 questions, so providing I don't waffle for too long, this shouldn't be too long a film. Which will be good. Because then that means I don't have too much editing to do either. Yay! Right. The stash makeup tag, question one. Have you ever seriously combed your stash looking for colours that are close to some big new release you want to not buy, but want to use? Yes. <laughs> yes. In fact, I've got a film from... I think it was last year. I'm sure it was last year. Uh, when the Gemini palette came out from Melt, and I wanted that palette so much. But there was no way I was going to be able to afford it at all. Um, and I combed all of my um, collection. Couldn't find... I could, I could match the bronzy gold end, but do you think I could find anything to match the green end? Which is the end that I was interested in. Nah. So I went online and bought some... I bought four Colourpop shadows to fulfil that particular shade that I didn't have any of and then it seemed like the next six months were full of palettes coming out with just those shades in it so <laughs> I now have quite a few um, if it were released now I'd have no problem I wouldn't have needed to get the Colourpop ones but there is another Melt palette that I'm looking at at the moment the Muerte one with the turquoise and the blood red and I'm thinking well I've got the electro turquoise palette now thank you Kay that's what I used to do this look with it should already be up um, and I've got blood sugar for the deep blood reds and I've got blue blood which should cover the deeper blues so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that by going through my palettes I'll be able to stop pining over that Moete palette quite so much although it does call to me it really really calls to me that palette they're both melt palettes that's quite interesting two would you consider working in a collab with someone who is doing a stash mashup of the palette you want to use yeah why not why not if I've got a palette and they haven't, or if they've got the palette and I haven't, why should we not still combine our talents? Uh, yes, it's nice to use the same palette and show people, particularly on my photo inspiration series, for example, where um, well, that's more that's more focusing on the photo than it is the actual palette, but where two people can look at one colour scheme and get two completely different looks out of it. So why not showcase that, yes, for example, um, what palettes have I got out at the moment? I've got this one out. This um, Elf Earth and Ocean one would actually, this side would be quite a good dupe for the Gemini palette. So, you know... If someone wanted to collab with me and they'd got the Gemini palette and I could use that and pull some other ones from my collection, why not? I don't I don't see any problem at all with collabing with someone who's got the same colours but maybe not necessarily the same palette. Three, would you be willing to send good pictures of your collab to your collab partner for comparison for their mashup? Well, yes, of course, because the better pictures they have to compare it to rather than the promo shots, which I'm always accurate. Uh, 
um, the better our collab's going to be. I'm not the sort of person who collabs with someone trying to trip them up or have the better look of the two collabs or you know I, I collab with people who I consider are as good if not better artists than I am because that stretches me that makes me grow that makes me push my skills so yes of course I send them good quality photos to make sure they've got as close a match as possible because that just makes the collab more interesting Four. Do you consider this a good alternative for newer creators or anyone else on a limited budget? Yeah, I think it could be an absolute... It, it could be something that, that you kind of theme your channel around. For me, for example, my, my channel is a teaching channel. So my tutorials are longer than most people's. I zoom right in close. I do it in real time. I don't speed things up. I don't cut things out you get to see exactly how to create an eye look and you see it in real time so that you know a how long it's going to take you to achieve and b that you can follow along step by step and it's not suddenly going to go to double speed or that they come back in and the other eye's all done and you're like oh, hang on a minute now i've got to... and yes that means my my channel grows a lot slower than most people who started at the same time as me um, but it's important for me that my channel offers that because I think it's a gap in the market. So you could theme your channel around duping higher end releases so that other people on a limited budget can be encouraged to think, oh I've got that palette and I've got that palette which means I could dupe that big palette as well. Because, not being funny, once the colours are on your eyes, there are, there are no there are no unique colours out there. There's not a colour that someone has created that nobody else can do. Um, so, once it's on your face, I could tell you this is Kaleidos on here. Or I could tell you this is... Natasha Denona. Or... I could tell you this is Colourpop. Could you tell the difference just by looking at it? No. And seeing as how you're not going to walk around with the palette to prove exactly what you've got on your face, then I think it'd be a, a, a great idea for someone to kind of corner that market. Because there are, there are so many makeup channel or makeup based channels out there at the moment it's difficult to find something which will make you different to everybody else which will make you interesting and will make people think oh hang on a minute this is something unique that this channel can offer me this is something that nobody else is doing and you know i see people all the time the the bigger influencers that i follow say Oh, we, we could do tutorials, but they just, you know, they, they just don't get the numbers. Bitch, I'm not even monetised yet anyway. And even if I was monetised, my channel is built around teaching people how to enjoy makeup, teaching people how to combine colours, teaching people how to blend. That to me is more important than the numbers. If I've got five people commenting on my film that I've helped them then that's five people that I've made smile that's important uh, question five would you avoid doing a mashup to recreate a smaller or an indie brand yeah I think I would I, I think A company like Elf or a company like Too Faced or Jeffree Star or even Colourpop because although technically they're indie they are a, a big company now they've got their own manufacturing plant. Um, bigger companies are not going to miss two or three people not buying the palette. 
and duping it with other palettes. Indie brands, those three or four sales could be the difference between them paying their mortgage that month and not. So, if it's a smaller or an indie brand, I would rather try and get hold of their specific palette rather than do um, a stash mashup I think yeah I, I, I would feel bad taking sales away from indie companies and from smaller smaller brands six would you ever try to pass a mash off mash up off as the big brand to make your channel look more prosperous no but if i had it'd probably be a much bigger channel by now <laughs> i'm just too honest for my own girl i can't lie to save my life it's like i'm crap at lying you'd know straight away um, and yeah, I probably could tag Instagram posts with different brands to try and get their attention. But I wouldn't want to build my career on a lie. You know, I, I slate Jimmy Chuck for doing that. His whole career was based on lying about his photo, his school photo. I don't trust people who lie to me, even little lies, because little lies lead to medium-sized lies, and medium-sized lies lead to bigger lies, and before you know it, you can't believe a word they're saying to you. you got to have trust. You have to have trust. And likewise in the channels you follow, you have to trust their reviews, because if they say that a palette is good, and then you go out and spend your money on it, and it's absolute tripe, You've wasted your money because of them. And that's not on. That's really not on. So no. Um, I wouldn't tag bigger brands in a makeup look to uh, to try and grow my channel because I would feel like a fraud, and then that would come across in my films. And then people would stop watching me, and yeah. Uh, question seven: Do you think big brands might retaliate if the mashup became really popular? I think we might start looking at the prices of their palettes and stop not stop selling a two pound fifty AliExpress palette for fifty quid. Yes, I'm looking at you too fast. Yes, I'm looking at you, Kylie. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, some of the prices. I mean, how on earth can Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona justify over a hundred quid for a palette? I'm sorry, have we got crushed genuine gemstones in this palette? Was it made by 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 fairies in in Wonderland that have sprinkled it with magic fairy dust so that every time you wear it you become the most alluring person in the room. No. My hubby actually said to me when I was I was looking at some different things and he's like, "Who's that by then?" I'm like, "Oh, that's by I think it was I think it was one of the Kevin O'Quan um, blushes." One of the ones that sort of fades from deeper down to lighter. And he went, ah, oh, it's named after a person, that means it'll be expensive. And I thought, you know what, he's got a point. Tom Ford, Kevin O'Quan, Natasha Denona, um, Pat McGrath, Bobby Brown. He's got a point. All of these ones that are named after a figurehead tend to be bloody expensive. So really, you're, you're buying the name. It's like buying branded cornflakes instead of buying value cornflakes which are probably the exact same thing just not in a pretty box um, 
so yeah i think the bigger brands if if they start seeing that they are losing sales because people are choosing to shop their own stash or getting um, drugstore or cheaper pallets to dupe them I think they would have to start looking at how much they're charging for their pallets which could be a good thing all round because then we could all afford an Natasha's alone a pallet we could all afford you know these oh, I love the look of the Pat McGrath Star Wars um, collab but there's no way in hell I'm paying those prices not for bloody makeup. No way. Uh, number eight. How many stash mashups have you done for your channel? Probably just that one, actually, at the moment with the uh, the Gemini palette where I used the ColourPop shadows. Um, oh no, I did one where I compared the Revolution Ice palette to the Jeffree Star Blue Blood, so that's another one that I did. Um, so I've done two that I can think of. But if that's something you'd like to see me do more of, then you drop a palette down in the description and I will do my best to do it. What have I let myself in for now? <laughs> oh lord okay no seriously though if there is a palette that you are really interested in that you really want but just can't afford let me know in the comments section and i will do my best to either find a dupe palette for cheaper or i will do my best to shop my stash and show you which palettes you can use that are cheaper or that you may already have in your collection that you can use to create the same kind of looks. Number nine. Did you create a mashup for this video? <laughs> no, sorry, I didn't because I was playing with a Christmas present. So this one is not a mashup. However, if you want me to try <laughs> Mind you, it's, it's Kaleidos, which is an indie company, so I probably wouldn't dupe this one for you. Um, but if you wanted me to do a mashup of any of my previous looks from any of my previous palettes, providing it's not an indie company, then, um, yeah, let me know, and I will do my best. Now, question 10 was, if you did do a mashup for this video, what colours from your stash did you use? So, obviously, that's not applicable for me on this one. So it's actually only nine questions. So, boom, done it, finished, awesome. Um, as I said, this look should already be up. I think I upload Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. I think this is going up Thursday and I think this look will have gone up two days ago. Um, I will try to remember to link this look in the description box if i forget give me a nudge and i'll either pin a comment or i'll just update the description box to include it for you um i hope you found this interesting um i will link Anne's channel below and if i can remember i'll link her original film where she did this where she created this um this tag and now it is time for me to tag people to do this and I tag, who do I tag, who do I think will actually do the tag because there's times that you tag people and they just don't do it and you're like but they want to know your answers, that's why I tagged you so anybody I have collabed with I tag you but specifically I tag my YouTube wifey Nikki Raven I tag my YouTube mistresses Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 and Anya Stamper also known as Pink Sweets and I tag my YouTube daughter Chelsea I tag you and I tag my 24-hour clock buddy, Kaylee. Right. 
those are the specific tags but uh, as I said if I have collabed with you or if you are watching this and you have a channel and you want to film this then by all means go ahead just please remember to tag Anne as the originator of this tag how many times can I say the word tag do not turn it into a drinking game you'll be very very drunk by the end of it and I take no responsibility for that at all Um, if you don't have a channel or um, another way of, of letting me know but you want to join in the fun, then my comment section is open. Feel free to answer the questions down there. I will copy the questions into my description box so that you can easily find them without having to keep playing and pausing the video. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed because you are still being culled against your wishes. Gotta love YouTube. Continuing 2020 the same way they did 2019. <laughs> Seriously though, please uh, please just double check you are still subscribed even if I am still appearing in your newsfeed. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. Um... I hope you'd like to watch some more films of mine and I really hope you'd like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey because let's face it 4F beauty girls and boys are the nicest family on YouTube and yes I'm slightly biased and no I don't care that I'm slightly biased <laughs> Right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.